Well, hello there, you amazing people. This is again going to be a polarizing subject. Some people will get, I told you so moments, some people get angry. But it's something I have been really passionate about. Well, we're going to talk about passion for close to 30 years in Linux. And that is that in my humble opinion and in a lot of other people's opinions linux have a problem and it's the toxicity within linux it's not just you know little chap here little chap there no it's full blown attacks and a lot of people tend to say to me this don't exist it's the minority it never happens it's like a few bad apples it's not an issue i will agree that it's a few bad apples but it's a lot of few bad apples it's not the majority of the community because the majority community don't say much it's like with all communities there's something called the silent minority they love minor ma majority but the thing is the people that speak up are being heard you can you can say all you want that linux has a, a lot of great people and i will agree with you but if those great people never speak or type or say something the crazy people are the ones that people are seeing and hearing and that's the issue here i honestly believe that it's only a select few people or a minority not just a few but actually a select lot of people and these people tend to also be really big into the free software foundation or FOSS in general they're not just your avids i just use the best tool for the job or educated people like i rarely see educated people in it going to the depth as the toxic users do i sometimes see a random developer here and there that think they're the bee's knees because they got the exams paper like yesterday and now they have like 20 40 years of experience and no more than everyone else and I, there's a few of those also but for the most part the most toxic people are also the let's be nice and call them the less knowledgeable people because they really don't know what they're talking about and they're just swooping and scooping and huffing and puffing that copium from richard stallman and his camp and it's really bad look for linux i have so many people that have told me that they stopped using Linux or stopped engaging with the Linux community because of these people. To some degree, and this is going to be a controversial opinion, but to some degree, it's actually the loud or the silent minority that's to blame. Because the more good people that speak, the more good people that tells the world that these not cases exist, the less of a voice they will have. But I get it. I'm in the same boat. That's why I stopped commenting every day on, on videos. I do it like one or two times a week and I go nuts for like a half an hour, an hour, and then I don't comment anymore. Because nine out of ten, or not nine, let's say eight, six out of ten times you're dealing with not cases. No matter what community you're in, you're dealing with not cases. Because those are the only ones that have time to sit and comment or tweet or, or X or whatever it's called all the fucking time. It's actually people not doing a thing. Most people are busy with, busy with family, work, uh, being a grown up, the people that you see going nuts and being toxic in, in again in most areas are people that have nothing else to do or they are doing it while they're at work which is another fucking massive issue in of itself why am i saying this this video here is a really good example it's the latest one that i found is a day old i watched this amazing dude's videos on and off great content and before we dive into this, it's been a little bit of a long intro, but before we go into it, just go quickly over his comment section, go watch his videos, subscribe to him, like his stuff, he's a great fucking dude. And he's level-headed. This is like the third time he tried to use Linux full-time, and it just didn't do what he needed it to do. And for a lot of people, that's the situation with Linux. It just don't do what they need it to do, or the free and alternative software is not ready yet, or it's too cumbersome, or it's too bugged or it's too unstable call it what you will there's just too many hurdles for them to do so and the linux users mentality and when i say linux users i mean the crazy linux users not everyone but i just for the sake of simplicity will say linux users and now you as an intelligent person have heard that i mean the crazy linux users we on the same level here we on the same boat when i'm talking the linux users mentality is blame the person which people do in here or blame other companies for not supporting linux which they do in here never blame linux it's never linux's fault never and if you live long enough in this earth you will realize one thing there is really 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 few situations where you can say it's never one thing's fault like really really select few cases if you are out walking and you get attacked you've done nothing fucking wrong you know if you find a uh in quote 
now nice spouse and they turn out to be the devil themselves, you did nothing wrong. There are, you know, really select few cases where you can say this is all out of my control or someone's control. Really select few cases. When it comes to Linux, to some degree, sometimes more than not, or, or sorry, not more than not, but sometimes more or, or to a lesser degree, that's what I want to say. Linux is to blame for a lot of the shit that's either not happening with Linux or being done badly with Linux. When I mean Linux, I mean the Linux community, the Linux developers, the open source developers, the first communities and stuff like that. Because they cannot wash their hand and just say it's his fault he can't live on Linux. They can't say it's Adobe or other companies' fault that he can't live on Linux. Are they? Is it partially his fault? I will say no, but you could always debate that to some degree he may have chosen the wrong software or he give it time he may be familiar with other software suites that could replace the ones he's using. There will be a good argument that is probably not his like fault fault, but he could adapt. Is it Adobe's fault and all these big companies fault for not that Linux don't have their software? No, because they are business. If there's no justification for making the software for Linux financially, why should they? Some companies do be, to be nice or because they believe in fuss and all of that shit. But here's the thing, the second those companies get into troubles financially, that's the support that's being cut right away because it's not making the company money. When, when companies have to, to basically cut off the fat, it will be something like Linux support or open source support that is going to be dropped first because it's either not making companies money or only marginally com making companies money if they are not a purely Linux based company like Canonical and Red Hat and SUSE. And people tend to forget that. Adobe would sponsor or support, I'm just using Adobe as an example here, they are also in hot water lately by the way, but Adobe or other big companies would ne not mind at all supporting Linux if it made sense in the market. Why do you think Nvidia open source their, their um, server or, or their workstation and GPUs because it makes sense. That's why they did it, not because of pressure from open source or FOSS or Richard Stallman. No, it just makes sense in the market we are in today. We can't live in this like give me, give me, give me mentality. And that's one of the biggest points that these people tend to miss. I have talked about this in some of my reaction videos before and in other videos to death, but I think this is an, again a recent good example. This dude here tried Linux and there were a few things he didn't like, there was a few things he liked, there was a few things things did amazing, there was a few things things did, did not do that good. And in the end, he just chose not to use it because the tool sets that he's using now, that's not on Linux, just make more sense for his situation. Today, it may change in a year, six months, two years, next week, who knows? But instead of then being like, what can we do to help? What needs to get fixed? What do Linux need to do better? They are attacking him for not being smart enough, for not know Linux, and he should just stick with it. And after a year or two, he will get it. And, and yeah, but again, he he's a busy dude. He can't just say, oh, I'm just neglecting my family and work because I have to learn Linux for a year. That would make sense if he got paid to do so, if he got paid for making this channel here and he got paid a full salary for switching to Linux, it will make more sense for him. But you try and justify to your wife or spouse that you are going to build, spend three hours more every day in your man cave or girl cave because you're learning Linux, you'll probably be single really fucking fast, really fast. But they don't think about that. So what they do is they just... I'm just scrolling fast down it here, but he actually was really smart in painting this obnoxious dude here. You can see here, it's just a long fucking conversation of that dude going mental at people and Raid Owl here. It is, it's, it's not even funny how... Look! Like, this is within a day, people. Some of them are defending him. Some are defending him. But this is how great, like the last thing, you know, so again, the, the toxic people are kind of gotten, you know, pushed out because the, the toxic people, they tend to only last like half a day, then then all the speaking points have been basically cut down to the ground with a fucking machete and, and they have no response to and then the support slowly start to come in. So there's a lot of support for Raid Owl here, which is amazing. And, and be those people, be those people supporting them, even if they do stuff you don't agree with, as long as they're not hurting anyone. But if you scroll down here, there is a lot of those kind of comments. Some of them are more like, I would say, just small little jabs at him, which is fine. You know, it's okay to be a little bit, you know, passionate, uh, but not obnoxious. And there's a lot of obnoxiousness in here. And that is the picture you were sending out to the world in the Linux community. I'm sorry to say it, but it is. He's been a member for one year. Oh, so we can see their member badges. Nice. 
I didn't know that, to be honest. But you get the idea. I will say that probably the majority of comments are good comments, but it's not like 50-50. I will say it's probably like in, in the 60s to 70% that's good. And then you have 30-40% that's just obnoxious or just batshit crazy or at least sus. You know, it's just not okay. And you'll say, oh, well, uh, Windows users are also toxic and Mac users. And I will tell you this, and I can only talk from my own experience, of course. I have been in this computing landscape and talked to Windows, Mac and Linux users for close to 30 years, if not longer. I have never in IT seen people acting like this other than FOSS, Linux and free software foundation people. The only other places I see people acting the way that these people, the, the, the toxic Linux users are acting is veganism, social justice warriors, wokeness. Those are the only places I see people going this batshit crazy over someone's choices of distribution, package manager, choosing not to follow their ideology, their um, way of thinking and stuff like that. And, and at the same time, they promote freedom. They promote exclusive, uh, inclusive. They're like, oh, well, Linux, you own your hardware, you own your software, you are free on Linux. Which you could debate to some degree, you are have a little bit more control than not on Linux. It's a good argument. But freedom also means that we have the right to not agree on what you agree. We also have the right to not do what you are doing or use what you are using as long as, again, we are following the law and society's norms and stuff like that. Like, just because you run around with clothes, that don't mean that I should have the right to run around naked in the office. You get what I'm saying here? Everything, you know, it's not black and white. But for the, the, the Linux users, it, it's it's a lot like it's either you're doing what we are telling you to do and what we have deemed to be acceptable or else we are going fucking cray cray on your ass like we are honey batching your balls to the highest degree that's just not okay dudes and again veganism social justice warriors vogue those are the only other place i've seen it. and uh, like i said before i'm talking with like close to 30 years of experience. I have never, never, and it, again, I can only talk for myself and what I see with people I interact with and, and, and my world bubble or what you will call it or what's happening in my peripheral visions and stuff like that. I have never seen Windows users be like that towards Linux. They may disagree, they may call it a stupid hobby OS, they may be a little bit sarcastic, but never this fucking toxic like this dude and other dudes are and going this mental in a comment section. Never. The same in Mac users that can be self-righteous, arrogant a asshats that think they are fucking better than every everyone because they're running around with that Apple logo fucking tattooed on their butt cheeks. They are still just be like, hey, I get you. I don't agree with you, but I don't want to fight. Linux users, they want to fight. And here's the thing, and he actually say that kind of sarcastically in this video, they also love to fight themselves. So let's go back again. Where do you see people eating themselves from the inside? Veganism, social justice warriors, vokeness. You're not woke enough. We can't cancel someone out there in the ether. So let's find someone in our own ranks that we can ostracize for not being woke enough or doing social justice warrior, warrior kind of thing the right way or not being vegan enough. And then you're pushing them out until they find someone else they can be a rage uh, at. It's a little bit like being a professional victim slash professional uh, judges slash professional higher, uh, more moral, higher ground than anyone else. Because the fact is, and this is a fact that, that a lot of those toxic Linux users don't like to hear, no matter what is going to happen with Linux markets here on the desktop, you will never get rid of Windows or Mac. Or. Never. It's here to stay. Linux is here to stay. You'll never get rid of Linux either. But Linux could drastically lose their market share. Linux could go down to like the one ish percent as it has been for many, many decades. Or not many decades, but for a good long time. Really fast. It could even be like, it, it, like it, it, the perfect scenario would be a third to Linux, a third to Mac, a third to Windows. Even if Linux was 50% or 25 to Mac and Windows, you still have to deal with those kind of people that are using those systems. Because the Believe it or not, there's actually use cases for Mac OS and Linux, uh, or not Linux, Mac OS and Windows in this world. Because they do things that Linux either can't do or are not doing good enough. The same as Linux are doing things they can and better than they are. There will never be one OS that do everything the best. And for some people that have specific workflows or workloads they have to do over and over again, they choose the OS that suit that the best. If you are a smart IT purse. That's how you do. You don't handicap a company for the sake of FOSS and Linux. You don't. Also, you don't handicap a company for the sake of Mac or Windows. You use 
the tool that fits best for the company. If that company is in, entangled in, in Windows services, left, right, and center, and yes, Linux may be the best choice for their workstations, but all of their things that they're using, their services, their, their infrastructure, their uh, cloud services, is all based on Azure and, and Microsoft services. It makes no sense to give them Linux because then a lot of incompatibilities are starting to rise, even though Linux may be more optimal for their aging workstation. So they have to stick with Windows. As much as, as the Linux world would or hate me saying this and hate people like me saying this there's a reason why not everyone is using linux and it's not because of, of windows are forcing them or anything like that no it's because for the things that they are doing they need windows and i, I know a lot of people like oh well assure is linux no assure is not Linux. i use assure every fucking day it's it's whatever you want it to be there is so much lin windows only technologies in there that you can't even access via linux or and as a linux server or and stuff like that that it is it's, it's the stupidest thing that because you can run an Ubuntu server on Azure that you think it's Azure servers all the fucking thing. Azure is basically a mix of everything. They, they use, again, they use whatever tool is the best for the job. That's what Microsoft do. Go, go watch videos about uh, developers in Microsoft. They some, some of them use Mac, some of them use Linux, some of them use Windows, some of them use all of that fucking shit. Some of them use Android, Mac, and Windows if they're app developers. And they're, they're working on one of those apps that works on all three platforms. They need all three platforms to test it with the same if they if they were making apps that worked on Linux, they, they will have a Linux machine running. The only people that are living in this weird world that don't exist are the people like this dude here. Because in their world, there is Linux, FOSS, and everyone. That world will never happen and don't exist. I'm sorry to say it, I'm burst your bubble right now. If you don't like red-headed people, the only reason you can get, or the only way you can get rid of red-headed people is to try and do something in the nature of a bearded guy in the 40s from Germany, tried, or will Austria basically try to do. That's the only way you can get rid of something 100%. And that's not the fucking way you want to go about things. <laughs> Let's be honest, it's not the best way of going around doing things. It, it makes you batshit crazy, okay? But it will never happen. And it, the wor that world can't exist. A free world world means that people should be allowed to do things you don't agree with. I believe strongly in individual freedom, not the freedom that you tell me that I that that is freedom. Because then it's not freedom. It is your version of makes you into a dictator. If you're telling someone else what to do and you're forcing it upon them, that's basically being a dictator to some degree. And that's what they, these people want. They want to eradicate Windows and Mac. They want to eradicate proprietary software because they have seen the light. Let's not let the developers that are spending millions and billions of dollars and employing thousands of people make that decision. No, let's us make it for you. That's that's not how this world works. That's not, not how anything should work. We are all different. That also means that we can't, just because one person can do everything in one thing, don't mean another one can. Just because one person happily could live on Antarctica, don't mean everyone can. Just because one person loves heat, don't don't mean everyone loves it. Just because you can do something, don't mean everyone can do something. Because with that fucking logic, we should all be Peyton Manning's uh, star quarterbacks in the NFL. There's a reasons why those are unique people, because we are not all the same. We don't have the same preferences. We don't have the same lifestyle. We're not doing the same things with technology. We're not having the same jobs. We're not having the same spouses. We're not living in the same places. We're not doing the same kind of work. And even if we're doing the same kind of work, we're doing it differently. But these people, down here well i can so you can it's on intelligent it's it's the lowest iq take you can have on almost anything that said follow subscribe to this dude here hate me yell at me i don't care go watch some of his wait videos where he don't talk about linux because you can learn a lot from this dude and that's my point also these people here are now limit their way of learning they limit their potential knowledge they can acquire because oh well, he's a windows guy a mac guy so i don't want to listen to him he knows what the fuck he's talking about there's a lot of linux users that know what they're talking about and there's a lot of windows users and proprietary software developers that know a lot of what they're talking about and if you dis missing people just because they do, they are wearing a shirt you don't like that's a you problem not a them problem he not being able to run linux and happily go back to what he used before is not a him problem it's a you problem if you are like him down here or this person down here that have massive issues with see you all later bye bye